Much better. Hi, my name is Rick. Welcome to the Bearded Mando. You're here because you saw the title and you want to make a custom Mandalorian helmet. That's what I'm going to show you how to do. Let's get to it. All right, the first thing I'll do is peel all the stickers off the helmet. So many stickers. Next, I'm going to remove the chin strap by drilling out the rivets. I'm going to hold on to this because I might use it in a later project. I tend to hold on to a lot of things like this. Hi, my name's Rick, and I'm a cosplay hoarder. Hi, Rick! After the chin strap is removed, I moved on to sanding. So much sanding. I'm using 120 grit sandpaper, 3M Pro grade. This stuff is great wet or dry sanding, and to be honest, I've misplaced more of this stuff than I've actually used. Some of the stickers left a residue that didn't come off with the sanding. I thought a scrubby and some kitchen cleanser might do the trick, but it didn't. So I went back to the sandpaper and wet sanded them off. As I was sanding, I found a crack. Cracks are bad, okay? The best way I know to deal with a crack is to drill a hole at the very end of the crack. I had some friends in the service who did sheet metal work, and that's how they dealt with small cracks in the airframe. The crack won't go past the hole. Just use an eighth inch drill bit and that took care of it. I went to the dented helmet and downloaded the templates for the boba helmet. I'll put a link in the description. Printed out pages 15, 16, 19, and 20 for the outer shell. Then I just cut them out and assembled them. Right now, we're just checking to make sure everything fits. I like to print my templates out on heavy cardstock. It's just easier for me to work with and they hold up a lot better than paper. You can print them out on paper, but it's a good idea to trace them out on poster board. They'll just, like I said, they'll just hold up a lot better. Once I have everything assembled, I tape it to the helmet. 
Make sure you find the center line on the helmet. It'll make life so much easier. I'm going to try and set this about half inch from the lip on the front just to keep it level. Now I have a paper helmet. Yay! With the helmet on, open your mouth wide like a yawn. You don't want people seeing your jaw while you're talking to them or yawning. It kind of ruins the illusion. Having a bushy beard myself, I had to point to where my chin is. I haven't seen my chin in about seven years. That's long enough to consider it legally dead. Also, check to make sure that the back comes down far enough. Watch out for that neck meat. It'll get you every time. So, since I wasn't happy with the way things were, I scaled the templates up a bit and printed out pages 13, 14, 17, and 18 for the inner shell. Once printed, I cut, assembled, and sized them on the helmet just like I did for the outer shell test. Now I want to split the template in the front at seam E and F. This will give you a smooth back with much less sanding and bondo. Always a plus. No need to worry about that split in the front. The T-visor is going to cover that from the outer shell. The next step is to temporarily remove the padding from the helmet. Most of the padding was held in by Velcro, but the top is glued in. And then I sanded the inside of the helmet. Did I say there would be sanding? There's going to be so much more sanding. Brace yourself. On to closing the holes. Lots of holes. I started by covering the outside with painter's tape and finished with resin and cloth on the inside. Silly me, I couldn't find my fiberglass cloth, so I thought I'd see if ra using random strips of cloth would work. It did! Yay! It's not as strong as fiberglass cloth, but it's strong enough for Bondo. Remember, it's so much easier to do this when your cloth is pre-cut. Mix up the resin per the instructions. This stuff can be kind of touchy. Make sure to do this in a well-ventilated area. Use gloves and a mask. Safety first! Take some resin and wet the area. Then just place the cloth on the resin and add more resin. Make sure the cloth is saturated and smoothed out. Then repeat this over and over and over again, covering every single Hole. So many holes.
I let this cure outside for a couple of days until the smell went away. Now back to the inner shell template. Fold it in half and give it a good crease. This will help a lot later. I sanded down the bucket inside and out and cut off the handle. Yes, I kept the handle. I hoard a lot of things. Let's move on, shall we? Place the bucket on a level surface and use a T-square or just a sheet of paper to make a perpendicular line. This is to make sure that our template doesn't get laid out all wonky. So we're going to take the crease on the template and the line on the bucket and we're going to line those up. Then we're just going to start taping the template into place. Once it's in place, just trace it with a sharpie. Move the tape as needed and trace around it. I didn't think I had enough coverage in the back, so I extended it a little bit. Hashtag Mando Mullet!
It's always a good idea to mark which side is up and X out the lines that you don't want to cut. Always, always, always start with a sharp blade. Take it slow and use short cuts. Make sure you pick which side of the marker you want to cut on. On some things like the inner shell, it doesn't matter, but on other patterns, it might. Cutting on the inside means less sanding, but it also means that there is no room for error. In this case, I'm trying to cut on the inside of the marker. Big tip I picked up from watching Adam Savage, always put your tools where you look for them. Unfortunately, I misplaced my favorite box cutter before I learned that. Had to use my backup. This one's not nearly as comfortable as my favorite. It started digging into my hand after about 10 minutes. That's why you see the glove change.
Now that the helmet hoop is free from the bucket, I tape it to the table and make the final two cuts. Be careful where your hands are, and always take it slow. No need to sacrifice blood to the cosplay gods when they don't demand it. Trim off any whoops cuts. I trim the helmet down a bit, cutting the back down with a rotary tool and a saw blade, and then sanding the front a little bit. I wanted to make sure that I had a level line as a guide for the shell. I propped the helmet on a couple of coffee cans and made certain that it was level. I taped a gold marker to a T-square and marked my way around the helmet. Now this is where the gold line and the center line become very useful. Using these as guides, I tape the shell in place with heavy black tape. Gorilla duct tape is super tacky and makes this a lot easier. Pre-cut your tape into strips before you start. It makes things easier. Starting in the back, I drill a pilot hole. I just use the same 1 8 inch drill bit that I use for taking care of the crack.
If you don't have a rivet gun, you can just use small wood screws. Just make sure that the threads are smaller than your drill bit. Number six wood screws that are half inch and an eighth inch drill bit should do the trick. Install the screw and mark the exposed threads with a black marker. You can then remove the screw and cut it off as marked. Just use your rotary tool and a cutting blade. Don't try and cut off the exposed thread while it's installed. You will just wind up heating up the screw and melting the plastic. Yeah, I've done this. Once the screw is cut, just use some glue and reinstall it. Simple as that. I have a rivet gun. Yay! So I just drill holes and pop rivets. Make sure you don't drill into your hand. This would be bad. Check your spacing to make sure that there are no gaps between the shell and the helmet. I had to shoot an extra rivet or two when I thought it was done, but we're never really done, are we? Once the shell and the helmet are secure, replace some of the padding and take it for a test drive. Mark where your eyes are on this shell. This will make lining up the T-visor a lot easier. All right, I'm gonna end this first video right here. In the next video, we'll go over installing the outer shell and doing the faceplates.